Let us look at measles vaccine when they are given. Okay, measles vaccine is given at 9 to 12 months, like 1 year you can say and then 2 year. You can just remember as 1 year and 2 year if you want. Okay, before 1 year, before 2 year, something like that you can remember for measles. Okay, so actually MMR vaccine is not a part of the national immunization schedule. Okay, uh, measles Rubella MR is a part of uh, National Immunization Schedule, not MMR. Okay. So, measles is um, against what? Measles vaccine is against a virus, isn't it? So, do you know about this virus? Measles vaccine, guys, it is live attenuated, okay, against this vax, uh, virus. Look at the names of the strains here. Chick embryo, tissue culture, human diploid cells, so many uh, are there. According to it, the textbook, a single dose should be enough. Boosters are usually not needed. Interestingly, in Mexico, they have tried the aerosol measles vaccine. Wow. That's more like, you know, spraying into the nose. So, aerosols they are talking about. So, normally it is subcutaneous injection, guys. So, normally what is it? The route of administration is subcutaneous injection for measles vaccine. What is the dosage? Not the dosage, it's the dose, right? The dose is, dose is 0 0.5 to 1 ml, okay? Subcutaneous, intradermal, intramuscular. Three things they have mentioned here actually. Subcutaneous, intradermal, intramuscular. Three things they are mentioning. Actually, there is, uh, here it says that it is giving, um, give measles vaccine at 9 to 12 months and then revaccinate at 18 months in the form of MMR, okay? And in high risk situations, they can give the vaccine earlier, earlier than this nine months. And then they will follow it up. That is repeat after a gap of six months. Okay. Let us look at the precautions. Now, reconstituted vaccine must be employed the same day and leftover you should discard. You should not reuse the leftover. Let us look at the contra indications of this. So basically, if the person is acute, having acute illness, sudden illness, then we should not give. And then if there are, uh, if they are on immunosuppressive therapy, that is if they are taking steroids or anti-metabolites, alkylating agents, which will suppress the immune over long, prolonged period, if they are taking all this, we should not give this vaccine. Then, history of convulsions in the child or in the family, if they have this history of convulsions, then this vaccine should not be given. Leukemia, that is um, a mal malignancy, isn't it? Basically, that will be the cancer of the blood uh, forming cells, the bone marrow, right? Active tuberculosis if the person has, okay, don't give if the person has tuberculosis, if the person has leukemia, obviously. Then, um, basically, if the person is ill, right? If they are on immunosupp they are immunosuppressed. Immune deficiency states, they don't have enough immune to fight, like hypogamma, globinemia, severe HIV, obviously. Acquired immunodeficiency, right? If they have uh, HIV, that is if they are uh, severe HIV, they are calling it as severe HIV, don't give. Recent gamma globulin administration, if they have got a recent gamma globulin administration, if they have allergy or eczema, don't give measles vaccine. So, no remarkable complications will occur if they are handling it carefully and administering, administering it carefully, precautions taken and all that. Okay. However, there will be mild measles-like illness with fever and rash 5 to 10 days after immunization. The person will have mild illness, okay, with fever and rash. This can happen, they are saying, all these febrile reactions for a day or two from 5th to 12th post-vaccination day, okay. Convulsions can occur. Slight gastrointestinal upset, okay, rhinopharyngitis, so something to do with the nose and the pharynx, toxic shock syndrome, so this would be bad, isn't it, toxic shock syndrome. So basically, if it is administered carefully with precautions taken, that should not happen, all this toxic shock syndrome and all, isn't it. So, these are anyways the adverse complications, uh, reactions given in the textbook. So, it is better to know these, okay. So, in this video, what and all we covered? We covered about measles vaccine, right?
this is how the measles uh, virus looks. It has RNA. So basically it's a paramyxovirus, isn't it? And the myxovirus, it's a paramyxovirus. In the cytopathic effects of virus, we have seen measles. The cytopathic effect is syncytium or multinucleated giant cell formation. Just remember this for measles. Multinucleated giant cell formation, syncytium. For me measles virus will cause this type of cytopathic effect. So recap of everything that we have seen so far. Basically, when is measles given? Just before one year, just before two years. Measles vaccine which combined with rubella, measles, rubella, MR vaccine. MMR is also available. Measles, mumps, rubella, isn't it? Okay. So then we saw it is uh, measles is caused by virus. So this is a live attenuated viral vaccine, isn't it? There will be live attenuated virus inside this. So these are the strains. If you want, you can remember this. Subcutaneous injection, uh, they have they have so many varieties. Intradermal, intramuscular, aerosols also they have told. Right, dose is just 0.5 to 1 ml. Uh, look at this one, the storage of the vaccine, basically, it is in the main compartment, not in the freezing, it's the main compartment, top they will keep measles, okay. So, what else we have seen in the precaution, the vaccine, once it is opened, right, it should, the leftover should be discarded, whatever is there, the same day it has to be used, etc., leftover is discarded, for more details you have to look at the exact vaccine bottle and everything about it, okay, this is just a very high level overview. There will be some hours after which it is opened, storage conditions, everything you should know. Usually all vaccines will be plus 2 degree centigrade to plus 8 degree centigrade, okay. And uh, this is all uh, normal, okay. If you want to store for long term, there will be a lot of other rules, transport, all those rules will be different, okay. You have to look at the finer details. <coughs> So, it will not be administered, uh, administered if the patient has acute illness, immunosuppressive therapy, immunodeficient states, history of convulsions, if they have leukemia, active tuberculosis, severe HIV, if they had recent gamma globulin administration, allergy, eczema. Okay. So, after the uh, vaccine, what to expect? Um, mild measles-like illness, fever, rash, febrile reactions, convulsions, gastrointestinal upset, rhinopharyngitis, toxic shock syndrome, okay. But all this, um, especially if they are administered carefully with precautions taken, this and all should not happen, isn't it? Toxic shock syndrome at least. That's all for now guys in measles vaccine. We'll meet you in the next video. Bye-bye. Just to conclude, the uh, measles actually spreads via droplets, isn't it? Respiratory droplets and uh, it's highly contagious, okay. Guys, let's just uh, put a little more information on the disease itself. <clears throat> it's also called as rubiola, measles. It's very common and infectious, okay. A viral infection of childhood it is. And uh, what will be there? Catarrhal symptoms. Typical rash, okay. Measly rash. So, there will be pink, blotchy, irregular macular rash, which will first involve the face and the retroauricular area. Okay. It's a frequent, uh, this measles is a frequent cause of ill health, morbidity, especially in undernourished children and children below the age of 3. Okay. In healthy children, it is more or less benign. Okay. So, up to 6 months, the maternal antibodies will provide uh, some kind of protection against uh, measles. Actually, the clear uh, text here says that measles is unusual in children before the age of 3 to 4 months <clears throat> and it's mild in the next 6 months. Usually, this attacks 1 to 5 year old children. Okay, So, it attacks whom? 1 to 5 year old children, measles and uh, one attack will confer lifelong immunity. So, the causative agent we already told you it is measles virus, isn't it? So, transmission can be droplet infection or even direct indirect contact. Okay, the infectivity period of infectivity is 4 days prior to and 5 days after the appearance of rash. Okay, so even before you get rash and 5 days after the appearance of rash, the person will be infected, right? As in clinical features for measles, you have prodromal. And then eruptive and convalescent stage. So convalescent means what? Convalescent means uh, recent healing, isn't it? 
Okay, so these are the three stages. So in prodromal stage, you will see upper, respir upper respiratory catarrh, fever, malaise, conjunctivitis, photophobia, right? In this, you have something called as coplex spots. There's a lot of details, guys. Okay, so how's it going? We're looking at the clinical features. Eruptive phase, there'll be rash, etc. We'll not go into the details. Convalescent is mostly healing, right? Healing stage, that is what convalescent means, right? So disappearance of... Uh, fever, rash, etc. Now, basically, diagnosis is clinical itself. Basically, we will focus here on the complications of measles, which will scare us about it. Complications of measles. So, this was, should what is required to convince people to get the vaccine, isn't it? Okay, let's look at this. Immediate complications, guys. Um, they are talking about otitis media. Something to do with the ear, isn't it? Then, tracheobronchitis, bronchopneumonia, broncho, bronchioliths, emphysema, giant cell pneumonia. There's a terminology they are using here, giant cell pneumonia, which may prove fatal. Then, so activation of existing tuberculosis, isn't it? Then, vitamin A deficiency. Corneal ulceration secondary to vitamin A deficiency that follows after measles. That's why when they give measles vaccination, they also give vitamin A, isn't it? There can be hemorrhagic measles, black measles. It is called as fate. It is. It is has. It has fatal outcome. They say appendicitis, malnutrition, encephalitis is rare. CNS complications like Guillain Barr syndrome. So, retrobulbar neuritis, something to do with the eye, glomerular nephritis affecting the kidney, right? Stephen Johnson syndrome, decreased immunity, ECG changes, myocarditis, uncommon these are. So, basically you can say otitis media, very important, lungs it will affect a lot, then vitamin A deficiency, don't forget, then AIDS patient it will affect, then um, it will reactivate tuberculosis. That's why in contraindications we saw, right? Active tuberculosis if the person has, etc. Then CNS complications you can write. Late complications of measles. Okay. Subacute sclerosing panencephalitis affecting the brain, right? Myoclonic jerks, mental deterioration. So basically, it behaves like degenerative disorder. So that is the late complication. So is there any treatment for measles? No specific treatment. Okay. So they'll isolate, they'll give cough sedatives, vasoconstrictor, nasal drops, antipyretics. They will look at the eye, right? Antihistamines uh, for itching. Fluid they will maintain. Just remember that if there is secondary bacterial infection, then they'll give antibiotics, right? That's all. So, isolation they are talking about. Okay, then we have already spoken about the vaccination in active immunization. So, look at the passive protection. They'll give gamma globulins, isn't it? So, this they are not talking about the person itself. They are giving it to the contacts, is it? Healthy susceptible contacts. So, just as a continuation, uh, we just looked at the disease itself, rubiola, and uh, usually it attacks one to five year old child. There are three phases prodromal, eruptive, convalescent. Complications we saw it can affect the ear, lungs. As a late complication, CNS. No specific treatment is available. That's all. We have looked at uh, measles and measles vaccine in this video. Okay, that's all for now. Bye-bye.